Hello everyone, Kerry the Craft here, that's C-E-R-I, the Crafter, and let me here with a bit of a tutorial sort of share thing really today. Now, um, this video is pretty much aimed at those who are beginners to making um, junk journals. I'm going to be making two fabric journal covers. They're both going to be relatively the same technique, but I will share and show options in doing it. Anyway, why am I doing this? Well, besides, I always need journal covers. Um, the other day I was having one of those days, you know, the ones you just sat down and you've got your cup of coffee and your chalky biscuit and you're scrolling through eBay or Amazon. And I came across this company and I saw that they had um, some Tim Holtz fabric there and they were in the UK. And I went, you know what? I like those. So I just ordered them. So I only ordered two small pieces. So that sort of blends right into the background, doesn't it? So, but I haven't got any journal covers and I suddenly realised I didn't do journals for autumn last year. So I do have journal covers. I do have a fall journal covers. So I thought that would make a great fall journal cover. And this one, I absolutely adore this. Um, now, I know you can get Tim Holtz fabric in a lot of different places, but it just happened to be that I was here and I saw this. Now, um, this lady runs a business on eBay. There you go. Um, that's all of the details. She did reach out and let me know. Very good customer service. I knew stuff was coming. I knew the date it was going to be delivered. So if you're in the UK, have a look here. Not sure she ships internationally. Um, if you see something you really need, maybe reach out to her. But anyway, so there you go. So that's who it is. So thank you very much. Um, great customer service. Really enjoyed it. And I'm going to use these products. Now, I wanted to make two, two journal covers for fall, or autumn, as I would call it here in the UK. Now, um, what I'm going to do is so just do one at a time, Griffiths. It would be so much easier. Right, let's put this one. I love this one. Um, this one to one side. So I'm going to use that for the outside, and I'm going to use this for the inside. Again, this is just a piece of cotton fabric, I think. It... It was in my quilting stash, let's put it that way. And I thought, you know, that's perfect for what I want. And this one, because it's full, but it might actually end up as a sort of arty journal for me as well. And I really love this fabric with it. I love the colours throughout. So this will be the inside and that will be the outside. So we're going to show you how I do it. Now, as I said before, this is aimed at the beginners out there to journal making. Um, it could be that maybe you just want to watch and maybe I've got something different to offer that maybe you haven't heard of before. I mean, I doubt it. I'm certainly not a journal making aficionado. It's not easily said at this time in the morning. Right now, I'm basing these journal covers on 9 by 12 um, envelopes. So 9 by 12 envelope and I'm going to cut my fabric so that it actually has a bit of a board around it. So I'm just going to do that now actually get my sewing scissors out and this piece at spare will make a nice little fabric flip for when I actually do do the journal or it might actually make fabric pockets I'm not sure. So, so there you go so that will become a fabric flip. I'm not going to explain fabric flips in this, this, um, this tutorial because I'll probably cover them again when I actually do this journal. Now, in the future, when I have done the journal, which I'll probably do for you guys anyway, I will link it in the description box below here, just so you see there is a follow-up. But it's not going to be for several months, guys, I can almost assure you. So that's my first cover. Let's pull out my second cover. Right, now I want to make sure I've got the bit I really liked. Yeah, it was, the, it was this bit here. So I'm sorry, I've got a really matchy-matchy background. That's not normally me, but I didn't want to put fabric down on anything that might be painty or inky. Right, I only need about half an inch to an inch around, so I'm just going to cut this off here. Again, it'll give me something for a fabric flip. In fact, it'll give me two somethings for a fabric flip here. So... Yeah, it's one of those days today. I woke up this morning and I'm like, what do I want to do today? What am I going to film? And to be honest with you, I wasn't fired up about anything. And I think part of that is there are so many jobs that I have to do or waiting to be done. I just couldn't make up a decision which one to do. And I'm like, you know what? I only recently bought this fabric. I really wanted to play. 
so I'm going to do this today. And there's always someone out there who's a newbie who's never seen something like this done before. Now, I'm using 9x12 um, envelopes. I've got some brown ones here. I've got some white ones here. Actually, I need to stick the white ones down, don't I? I wonder whether the brown ones are stuck down. These are really, really old envelopes. Um, I don't even know where I got them from. They, they were probably hanging around from my office days and I just threw them in and knew I would use them at some point. So I'm just sealing them down. Now, if you happen to have, has this one got a sticky on it? It has, I'll just use that. Um, if you happen to have envelopes that have got, um, what's it, it's like a little split pin, a little metal thing you pull up and then you split to hold the envelope closed. I normally cut those out or tear them off. Uh, because I don't want metal in there because I'm going to be sewing these journal covers. And don't panic if you don't have a sewing machine. I'm going to show you an option. So, well, I'm feeling a bit discombobulated here. Right, let's start with this one. Is there a right and is there a wrong? Well, it's wrong to leave that on that side for a start. So, I'm going to stick each of my envelopes into the middle of my fabric. Now, if there's a pattern that's got a straight line in it, if I don't line it up with a straight line, I'm probably going to go a little bit crazy. So I can see here, this pattern here has got a straight line. So I'm going to get it as close as I can to that when I do it. I'm going to use Fabri-Tac, but I only need Fabri-Tac just to secure it in position a little bit. I don't need to soak the whole of this. I just need to do a little bit. Now, this is going to be one of those videos where there's a few repeated processes. Um, I'm going to do my best to edit them out unless it's just really minimal. Right, as you can see, not a huge amount, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna use my finger and I'm gonna spread out the Fabri-Tac because if there's a blob of Fabri-Tac, as I push the um, fabric down onto it, what will happen, it will come up through the fabric and leave a blob. And we don't want that, it'll, dis it'll mark my fabric. Right, just put that down there. Right, so I'm going to do this mass make style. I'm going to do each of them in turn as I go along. So here I'm back again. Right, so I've got these down. As I said, they're not stuck completely. They're just there to secure them, just to, just the envelopes so they don't move around on me. Um, I'm not overly bothered. I just wanted to make sure they're stuck down. If you do find there's places like that, that it's got a bit of a, a ripple in it or something, just take the time just to work it out. And yes, I am one of those people who sews, um, who sews, what am I talking about? Who irons my, my fabric. Now, the next thing I want to do, I mean, these are not bad, actually. Do I need to do them? Maybe I do. Is I want to just snip off. Um, so I've got about half an inch around the edges. I don't need a huge amount. I'll probably keep this because that could be a tie for the top of a tag at some point. So just flip that over that one's gone a bit wayward this was a piece of recycled fabric so I think it must have been a pair of cotton trousers or something I think if I remember correctly it's been in my stash for quite a while let's put it that way so that's that one done actually I won't do the next one at the moment I'll just do this one as we go along Oh, that needs a bit of a cut as well. So, um, now let's talk about alternatives. Actually, I'll cut the other one while I'm talking about alternatives. Now, if you um, wanted to only put fabric on the outside of your um, envelope and on the inside, you wanted just to stick some craft paper or a digital or something, that's totally fine. What it would say is, because the version I'm doing is two envelopes, which is four layers of paper, plus it's two layers of fabric, it's quite, quite robust. If you've only got one envelope, what I probably recommend doing is actually just cutting yourself a piece of thin card and putting a sheet of thin card inside the envelope before you seal it. And that way, yep, you've reinforced the envelope a little bit. Now, there is another thing you could potentially do as well, is if you wanted to have more of a like a quilted effect, 
you could get some batting or padding for um, the envelope and what you would do is you would stick the you would stick the batting or the the backing on here then put the fabric over the top and then when you sewed it it'd have more of a fabric type effect in that it'll be more more quilted should we say I might do one of those in the future for you because I don't I don't do those that often so when I was setting this video up I didn't actually think to offer you that as an option let's take that off there right all of these strips will just go into my little bin for strips and we're done and dusted with that now I want to talk about corners. Now, I eventually am going to put metal corners onto my journal covers because that's what I always do. But there are ways of doing the corners at this point. Now, you have the option. You will probably see people snip across and then they fold in the sides. OK, so you will see people just cut across here, fold in the sides. There is another way of doing it. You can bring this and glue it down here. And then when you fold these in, you get a perfectly mitered corner. Now you could come in at this point and do a little running stitch down there if you want to do by hand to hold it in place, but the two covers are gonna be next to each other. Now, because I know that I'm putting metal corners on here, I'm just gonna cut these off straight line right across all of the corners because I know the corners are gonna be concealed. They're, they're not going to be a problem for me. And just quickly do this. These are my sewing scissors and I'm being a little bit cautious because my sewing scissors are probably the sharpest scissors I've got. And I'm not about to share blood with anyone at this moment in time. <laughs> so I have cut myself several times with my scissors in, in the past. Also, because when I'm doing quilting or other sewing, a lot of the time I'll use a rotary blade, um, the quilting version, and I've slipped a few times with those. So I think it's because I always, I always feel like I'm in a hurry to do things, and that's where the accidents happen. There you go. Now, once I show you how to do the edges, I'm going to pause the video again and then I'm going to glue all of the edges down and then come back to you because there's something else I want to show you. Well, actually, there's a couple of something else I want to show you before I move on to my sewing machine. Right, these can go in my scraps bin because to be honest, if I'm doing little button clusters or something like that, that's where they'll go. Right, I'm happy about that. Loving these. So. Um, which one can you see best? Actually, you can probably see this one best. So what I intend doing now is I'm going to come along. Now, I'm going to be sewing the edges of this when I'm going to make a sandwich, basically. I'm going to do this. So when I've turned these corners of these edges over, I'm going to line them up with each other and then I'm going to sew along the edges. However, before that, I want to secure the edges actually in place. So I'm going to do this on one of them, then I'm going to pause you because you don't need to see this a thousand times either. Now, this time, I'm really not going to care whether I smooth out um, the Fabri-Tac because it's never going to be seen. So it's as quick as that. Some people even use a glue stick to do this part of the process because to be honest with you, it's only holding something in place while you sew it and then once you've sewn it um it's not going to go anywhere well it shouldn't go anywhere or anywhere um, i do try to make sure it's pulled right up against the edge of the envelope if you haven't mitered your corners like i haven't mitered my corners here you can also just snip the little tips off here which is exactly what i'm going to be doing in a moment but only do that if you're going to be putting metal corners on. So there you go. So this now gives me the inside of my journal. I'm just going to go around and just snip those tiny little bits off there. Or else I'll just build up bulk within my corners when I put them on. 
Now, this process works for any size envelopes you're using, by the way, as long as your fabric is big enough to fit it. So, time to pause you, then I'm going to come back and I'll show you the next stage. So, here we are, the orderly do it down. Now, so just so that clarity, I've got them stuck to their envelopes and then I'm going to turn these over. I need to turn it that way because that's where it's going to go. And then what we're going to do, what we, what I'm going to do is sew around there with the sewing machine. However, I did tell you there are other things that I wanted to discuss before that. So that's what one will look like and that's what the other one will look like. Actually, I actually want it this way up. I don't know why I'm being picky, but I'm being picky. So now, um, for those of you who do not have a sewing machine, actually, just before I do that, I'm just going to put a couple of bulldog clips on here just to hold this all in place. You could easily do this with um, little clips you could use. You could even pin it, I suppose. I mean, I'm just holding it in place just to make sure everything is lined up. And I'll double, double, double check that before I actually get to um, put them on the sewing machine. So if you do not have a sewing machine, you can do something which is called a whip stitch. OK, so if this is the front cover of my journal and this is the back, I always start in the back bottom corner down here. And what you do is you take I like to double my thread over. So I've just put it on the needle. I double the thread it over and tied a knot in the end of the thread. I choose a thread that matches my um, fabric the best I can get it so it's almost invisible. Then what I do, sorry, I didn't realize I was going to be doing a lesson here. A whip stitch is you start by going through one side just to secure the knot. I'm going to tuck that down on the inside so it's not visible. Granted, there are going to be corners glued onto this. Get down in there, will you? You know you're going to annoy me. There you go. And then all you do is you just come through and you catch the tops of both pieces of fabric. And it's almost like a running stitch all the way along. Now, if you're going to be doing this, I might suggest that you actually run a line of... Oh, I've got a knot in my thread now. Um, you line, run a line of Fabri-Tac um, along the top edges, just below where you're going to be sewing. That way you can actually get to ensure that it's completely sealed. Now, I like to use double th double thread. It will be less visible if you do one width of thread. OK, so I'm going to cut this off because that's not how I'm, I'm doing it. But I did want to show you that it is possible to do it without a sewing machine. Uh, let's see if I can just unthread all of this. And yes, if I wasn't so lazy, I would go over and get my seam ripper and just take it all out. I'm OK doing it this way. So it is quite a secure way to do it. As I said, what I would do is I would just glue this with fabric tap before I started. Why is it always everything is always so much harder when you have a camera pointed at you? Do you realize that? There you go. That's taken out of there. So, right. So th that's that's how I would address doing that without a sewing machine. Now, this one, I did have something I wanted to do on this that I wanted to share on camera with you, just so you're aware of, of basically what it is. So we've got our two halves here. Now, if I sew these two halves here together, I've got all of the crud stuff all over the back. So I'll be giving that a bit of a double side, a uh, bit of a tape clean up afterwards. Um, if I wanted to put anything on the front of here after I've actually sewn the front and back together, the stitching from here would be showing through here. A little bit lifting up and it's going to annoy me. Um, so what I would say is do what I'm about to show you. There you go, down you go. So now I have got this large journal card that I'm, I made a while ago. I think it must have been from a master board and I've, I've made it up. I love the journal card and I've given it a really thin coating of Mod Podge. This is Mod Podge. It'll seal it in and give it a bit of protection. Maybe it didn't need it, but I just feel that I wanted to. And what I want to do is I want to attach this to the front cover so that when the cover's actually 
close like that, I have this as a feature on the front. Now, to be able to put this on the front, I have options. I can wait till the cover is made and glue this down, or I can actually glue it down now and then run stitch around the corner, uh, around the edges, which is exactly what I want to do with this. So I'm going to come in and when my fabric tacks play nice, I'm just going to put a layer of fabric tack on here just to secure everything in position. I've sort of just folded this gently just so I can see the placement and to see that I've got it straight and I have. Now, another thing to note here, when you sew the signature in, you may put something like lace or fabric down here. So I always offset it slightly. Any, any journal top, I offset slightly to the right. But remember, you may want to put an eyelet or a closure or something here when you finish your journal. So always leave yourself a little bit of space for that. So, right, now the next bit, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do on camera. Using my sewing machine on camera is not going to be the easiest thing for any of us because all you'll see is the top of my machine with the needle going up and down. You won't even see what it's sewing. So I'm going to sew off camera and come back to you. Now, I'm going to, with this one, I'm going to sew this first. And then once this is sewn, I'm going to come in. I'm just going to use some glue stick to attach it to here to secure it so then I can sew the whole thing. This one, however, which doesn't need need a topper on the front, because I abs actually this is going to be in my front, because I absolutely love it. I'm actually just going to stick these together a little bit with um, a glue stick. And the glue stick is purely there just to hold everything in place while I sew so things don't move around. I will also use um, clips, my bulldog clips on the sides, just to hold everything secure because I want the whole thing lined up. If you're doing a journal, which you want to add lace to the cover, now is a good time to consider that. So I'm just trying to line up while I'm talking. It's important to me that it's lined up. Come on, off you come. You're not going to stick down until I'm happy with you. Right, top, bottom, all the sides. There's going to be a little bit of movement, I know. That's the front, that's the back. Maybe this one envelope is just fractionally bigger than the other. So I'll move that over a bit. There you go. Now, sorry, where was I at? I was talking about lace. Um, if you're someone who actually wants lace on the edges of your journal cover, now is the time to actually just put a piece of lace in there, sandwich it between the front and back, and then when you sew it with your machine, it'll be sewn in place. Okay, so I'm going to take a two second break for you. It's going to be several minutes for me because I have to sew this onto here, then I have to glue this onto its backing, then I have to sew everything else up. So bear with me, I'll be back in two seconds and I think I'm going to sew these in maybe like a terracotta colour because that will then stay within the theme of fall if that's where they end up. So bear with me guys, back in two. So just before I put my machine by, because I know someone's going to ask me what brand of machine I'm using, I'm using a Janome. Um, this model, I had it for years. I, I still sew fabric with it, which is probably going to create great uproar in the sewing community because I use it for paper and fabric um, and I've never had a problem. So what did we get up to? Okay um, this was the one there was a bit of a slight stretch to this fabric I didn't realize but I'm not overly worried because once this is folded which is like this and then it's stuffed with a signature and it gets fat and I might even put a front on this as well. Then I'm not overly bothered. So that's the first of them. So was that the front or was that the front? I think that was the front. Um, I'll show you how to put a corner on in a second. 
this was the second one so as you can see because i sewed this on before i sewed them together i don't see anything on the inside now the another thing i forgot to mention is if you want to sew pockets in here what you need to do is you either need to sew them in before you sew the two halves together or what I prefer to do is I actually lay it on here, pin it in place, so that when I actually sew this line, it catches all the pocket as well. So this one, fold this over. And again, that gives me my journal cover. So, right, I'm just going to put one of the corners on for you guys, because um, I've done it umpteen times, and I really, really don't think... You need to see me putting eight corners on what i'll do is i will again put one on and then i will show you at the end what they all look like so these are the corners i actually use all of the time they have this sort of wedge shape to them so they're this shape and that means once they're on i can squish them down to fit any size journal cover um i buy them on ebay or amazon what i do is i put in metal book corners or corner protectors for books um, and usually you'll find them but what I would really suggest is go through a few searches like scroll because sometimes these come in a pack of four or a pack of eight but then later on you may find they come in a pack of 20 or a pack of 50 and when you get the calculator out and work out how much they are each it's better to buy them in bulk than individually okay just just putting it out there because we're all about to try and save pennies for ourselves. So I'm going to come in. Now, I prefer to put a little bit of Fabri-Tac into this to start with. Can you see me? Yes, you can. Now, I'm not putting a huge amount in. I'm just putting a little bit in there and that will secure it to the cover after it's pinched in. So I'll push it so it makes sure it's really up against the corner and then because I can never pinch it properly I get a small pair of pliers and I work my way along and I just cinch it all down intact with the fabric or whatever cover I'm using now there are people out there who say that this marks their corners I've never had that happen to mine but you can if you wish put a little fold of fabric over this and then pinch over the fabric to push it down um as i said i've not had a problem right so i'm going to go ahead put all of the eight corners on and i'll be back to you and then we'll finish up so here we are all the corners are on a couple of things i forgot to say um i used a straight stitch on the edge of here personal choice i used a straight stitch around the edge of the journal cover because i'd use a straight stitch there personal choice you can do whatever you wish on this one i did a zigzag as i said this one for some reason i think there must have been a bit of stretch in this because i actually caught a little nick there and i've got a little trap fabric there so but i'm not worrying because the thing is once this is rolled and it's got all of the signature stuff in it i could even put lace top and bottom i don't know what's going to go on the front of that this one i'm really happy with i never worry about the insides either because once you've got all of the embellishments and stuff the fabric stretches and molds molds around so hopefully you enjoyed that it was just a little a little project I needed to do for myself and I would always turn the camera on if I can just to reiterate if you are doing that whip stitch remember I only used yellow fab uh, yellow thread so that you could see it on on the screen I would recommend choosing whichever thread matches as closely as you can to the fabric you're going to whip stitch Okay, so I think that's about it, guys. Um, you will probably see these journal covers maybe in the autumn on this channel, and I'll be working on to make journals from them. So, I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I, the Crafter. Until next time, goodbye now.